It's Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. Thanks for joining me today for Almost, Almost Live. I wanted us to play and make a collage sheet like this. I did this last weekend and posted it over on Instagram and Facebook and it got a lot of play. People seemed, I don't know, interested in the process. I'm sure you've all done this before and I had myself, but it had been a lot of years and I just had a bunch of scraps laying around and I thought I would make one of these. So I'm going to set this one to the side and then I'm going to um, start a fresh one. And I'll talk you through it on the way because it does take a while to, to do so. This is just a piece, any old piece of paper can be the basis for it. This happens to be the Dick Blick uh, sulfite paper, and I just tore a hunk of it. Um, I just tore it in a little, um, you know, a rectangular size to work on um, that would be good for me. I think it's about, this is a six inch ruler, so it's probably about 10 by 12 or 11 by 12 or something like that does not matter glue stick all right so then i gather papers and i just start very randomly gluing stuff down to the papers you know me i start with my corners but <laughs> you can do whatever you want and um as i when i gather papers i will gather some neutrals a lot of neutrals and then i will also gather sort of a group of papers in a color scheme. Today I grabbed just kind of some red and pinks and a few greens. Um, it doesn't honestly matter. You could just go in any variety pack of paper, but um, I think sometimes it's nice to have a color scheme going on. And um, I find that I tend to use them better if I create a color scheme. This is a great project to keep in mind for those times when you know, maybe you just lack the bandwidth to do a bigger project, which I got to be truthful. I've been like that a lot lately. This post pandemic thing, boy, it's not for sissies, man. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I've just been in an awkward place, maybe a little quasi depressed, who knows what. But doing a project like this can be fun and easy. And you just really don't have to think too much. So I'm going to put some parts down. No rhyme or reason. No worry about composition. It is truly an easy, easy thing to do. And the less time you devote to it, probably the better it's going to be if you can get your brain out of the way. I find <laughs> that's always the battle for me is getting my brain out of the way because otherwise my brain just wants to get involved. Hello, hello. And you know what? I don't want it to so many times. So this is something just fun. Painted papers, magazine pages, scraps, junk mail, anything is ripe for this process anything literally did you see how that left that there I kind of like it so of course I'm gonna leave it it's uh, that upside down a. <laughs> um, you could use matte medium if you don't have a glue stick I just like the ease of using a glue stick lots of times I will leave the edges hang over because that's an easy way to um, to handle it. If I want, I can trim them off later or I just leave them hang over. Well, I've glued this one down upside down. <laughs> Did not mean to. You'll probably want to speed this up until I get to the next section because it, it, it does take some time to get all the parts glued down. I love stuff like this, like paint you know paint swatch chips or whatever these are some old ones that i believe i picked up at our recycle center um they're just older than the ones you find in the hardware stores today and i really like them love them here's some of that green i 
threw in just because I could. And oh, that's the back side. Wow, the back side's really pretty. The front side's really pretty. So, you know, whatever goes. That was something that I had already trimmed up to use in a different project and then didn't use it. So this is the perfect time to get out those parts. You know, I started just keeping little boxes of parts and I will have neutrals in a box and then so usually I'll have some neutrals and then I will have some hand painted stuff in a box and manufactured stuff will be on its own because I want to grab a mix of those things. I, I like the result when you get a mix of that kind of stuff. You know, when you get a mix of manufactured and, um, and handmade. It's my favorite thing is to mix it all up like that. So over here I have just, this is a piece I tore off of something I, I made. I've got some other little bits that are already partially collaged in here. I think, I think I left those in. Like I don't know what this stuff is, but why not, right? It looks interesting, so it's fair game. Okay. Even a piece like this, it's messy, it's yucky, but here's the thing, you're probably gonna cover it up with something, so you might as well put part of it in here. This, I don't even know what on earth this is. It looks like I tore it off of something, but that's okay, because that's the kind of thing I love. Oh, it looks like it's part of a package now that I see it. There's a barcode over here. Um, yeah, love it. Same with this, some super random thing. This reminds me, I like to pick a mix of opaque and transparent. See how this being transparent looks so great over top of the underneath parts? I really love that. And I do specifically search for a mix when I'm picking the component parts that I will use. This is some very nice um, wrapping paper by the company. I don't know if you say Papin or Papin, P-A-P-I-N. If you give them a search, they have these books of wrapping paper that I'm just a little bit smitten with, I'll have to say. They are very, very lovely, and I will often take them to my teaching gigs and let the students have at them because they're nice to fill in, you know, if you're looking for, oh, here's another part of that. I think I'll use it over here. If you're looking for a beautiful patterns, especially, oh my, they have some gorgeous patterns, just gorgeous. I do try to use the paper over and over like this is this, you know, I try to use it in more than one place. I don't know why, I just do. And um, again, hand painted. I don't know how I'm going to be able to work around this little A. If it'll come up, I'd love to put it on the top. I think it's down there for good, though. Maybe I shall find a transparent part to go over it. I did grab some little pattern tissue here. Yeah, that'll be good. You can leave whites in the background or you can cover every inch. You can paint over top of this or you cannot paint over top of this. Options, options abound because it's really whatever is right for you and what you feel that you want to do or how you want it to look. I literally 
have not been paying much attention as I've glued this down, which is very much how I do it. Oh, here's one where I have some a few collage elements already layered up. And I think it's kind of interesting. So, hey, let's just glue this baby down. This is um, back in the day what we used to call making a motherboard. Um, I've made these for, oh my gosh, more than 20 years, I would say. And, um, you know, they, they're they always interesting. They're always great to go back and pull for your art. And they are never the same. It's the kind of thing you could never replicate this. I had my friend Mary Nasser over to my house last week and we just both made one and they looked completely different and it just was fun. It's a real fun way to spend the afternoon. You could just have your friends over, throw all your stuff in the middle, do whatever you like and see, see how it turns into something interesting, right? Okay, so I've got most of these parts covered, so I'm going to put the lid on the glue and set these aside. And then I usually get some washi tape. I try to get something that's kind of sheer like this. And this one's like a sepia and then this one's a black and white. So typically I go with something like that. I think I'm going to use the sepia on this and see how it looks. And I'll go around and I'll just kind of blend up certain areas. What I find is that when you put a little bit down like this over top of a few elements, it really sort of brings it together and it instantly makes it look perhaps more layered than it was before. Let's try some black and white too so you can get the look. I have a fair amount of black and white in this one, but sometimes I don't have much black and white and it's especially nice to bring it in with the um, washi. Well, this one is never gonna come off the, I just used this a couple days ago. All right, now I gotta get up close and personal with it and see if I can see it with my glasses and get some of this to come off of the roll. Okay, we're, we're honing in on it, but <laughs> it's hard to believe I used this last week. And I don't think I'm going to get that whole part off. But I'm going to put a little bit down just so that you can get a look of the black and white. And there's even a little bit of a bird head there, which is cool. This is coming off in strips, which is not good. <laughs> I like those numbered parts so very much, so I'll definitely want to use those. And I'm mainly looking for areas that feel like they need to be integrated or areas that look so-called boring. And by that, I mean they just look like they need a little bit more something something to make them look um, as interesting as the rest of the piece. This is one of those times when more is more you know sometimes you need to kind of pull back but this is a time when it is really great to have complexity in a lot of layers over top of one another and it can make it very interesting i have a stays on here in a brown and a sponge and i'm going to use this is the um one of our club stencils for um, March, March, the month we're in. And it's all this, um, these words that are just beautifully, beautifully um, cut. And um, I love how these glimpses of letters add something. You can't read them and that's okay. That is perfectly okay that you can't read them. But I love how they add a little something something to the page. 
my cat sat on this stencil. So if you ever wonder how I keep my stencils, well, this one has been folded and sat on. <laughs> it still works great. You gotta love that. This was designed by uh, Valerie Chauvin, one of our designers. It's a very, very beautiful stencil. I just love it. It's gonna be, it's gonna go down in history for me as one of the great integrators, which is a stencil that does exactly what I'm using it for. It integrates all the parts. Super, super nice. All right, at this stage of the game, you can stop. You can grab a pencil. I think I'm gonna grab a, um, I'm gonna grab an oil pencil. These are some Mitsubishi. You know, I've become smitten with oil pencils lately. I really have. Now, if I'm gonna do this, and this is gonna leave a little line, a different kind of line than what's previously in this, I'm using my non-dominant hand, okay? to just make a few marks across here. And I like how that comes off. Can go into a big old fat Posca. You could grab paint, you could do whatever. Let's just grab a little Posca. Posca magic here. Because you know, it is paint anyway. And sometimes you can get a Posca to actually splatter. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. Usually it's my, oh, there it's splattering. Yes, love it. You could rinse this with, or spritz it with some water to get some drips going. You can use some of these, um, these are these tempera, um, children's products. They're called tempera paint. Solid tempera paint. Great thing to put in here. They dry down real nice. All right, so the final thing you want to do when you're finally finished, which I'm almost finished, is you want to scan this. Take a photo of it or scan it or do something so that you have a record of this. And if you want to do something in the future, you might want to print it out. You could have it reproduced on tissue paper. I've done that before with some of my stuff. I use Zazzle for that. Um, and then once you've documented it, you can certainly tear it up and use it in your art. So, see how cool it is? when you tear it up. Oh, look at that one. It tore with a little hole. That is a bonus right there. I hope you enjoyed this super quickie lesson in how to make a collage on collage on collage motherboard in order to save and reuse in your art. I'm Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. Thank you so much for watching today.